Be ready. Two minutes. Upon you, goodness. Once again, we remind you, we'll start with the repechage for women under 57 kilograms. Konato wa Joshi, 57 kilogram Q. Haisha, Fukase, Kara, Sato, Shimas. Don't you block your hands. Thank you very much. Well, a very big welcome back to this third day here in Tokyo, the 2019 World Judo Championships. And this bustling city once again plays host to the greatest judo show on earth. 1964 saw the, saw the birth of judo on the Olympic stage and now it's established as one of the most contested sports in the world. Now yesterday, Japan got their first gold medals of this World Championships in both categories and they have Big hopes today in both the categories, the under 73s and the under 57 kilos categories. Joining me once again in the commentary position is Sheldon Franco Rooks, and he's going to introduce our first matches of the evening. Good evening, Neil, and good evening, everyone at home. And the first of the bronze medal contests features Yulia Kowalczyk of Poland. She's up against Daria Mezhetskaya of Russia. It will be Kowalczyk in the white Jadogi Mezhetskaya in blue. And the referee in the middle for this one is Vladimir Nutsubidze of Georgia. Yes, well, we've got repechage finals, first of all, and then they'll be followed by the semi-finals. Two repechage finals, followed by the semi-finals, and then, of course, it's all medal matches after that. Under 57 kilos category, just about to get underway. Mezhetskaya, uh, earlier on today, gave... Rafaela Silva, the Olympic champion, a run for her money. She'd already disposed of Miriam Roper, Jessica Klimke, the highly rated Canadian, and then the youngster from Mongolia, Lossel N. Otgon. That was on her way to the, the, the loss to Rafaela Silva. She's got a chance now to fight for a bronze medal. She's got to get past Yulia Kowalczyk of Poland, who herself, earlier on, gave Yoshida Tsukasa a real scare. Yeah, she really did. Kowalczyk's had a great run uh, in this World Championships. And we've seen a few shaky starts, I've got to say, from some of the stars uh, over the first couple of days. Well, all three days, actually. And it's, I think, because of nerves. Just kind of settled down. And I said it was the home of judo. This is where the first Olympic Games was held in this Nippon Budokan Hall and I think a few a few nerves. It's the World Championships, it is, and so they feel that they've got to perform here. Threw herself into that Ojigari attack. Also helped to break up a very strong grip that Mezhetskaya had taken. Mezhetskaya has several techniques that she can score up on with. And for the public out there who don't know much about judo, that's a good score. Wow. Wazari scored there, and uh, Kowalczyk does a drop uh, Sienagi, which is a very low shoulder throw, and takes her over onto her side. Not quite.
absolutely onto her back with impetus and for, with force, but it was on her side with force. Two of those will finish it. The main aim, of course, is to score it on. <laughs> yeah, she's been performing great all day. She really, she's been like this. She, like you say, she, she was a real scare to Yoshida. She caught Yoshida with the same technique. He's got to watch it down here because uh, unless it's Sky up, can follow it down. She's got groundwork and she has an arm lock, which most of the Russians have. Three different ways of winning on the ground, holding your opponent on their back with, uh, without any entanglement with the legs for 20 seconds or by arm locking or strangling for a submission. And then, of course, the other way of scoring is by throwing your opponent onto their back. We have a penalty system as well, but we'll point that out as we carry on through the fights and as it occurs. Thought, thought about the Ojigari. She, she, she can sell that better when that, that initial Sayonagi movement is more genuine. But it was hardly there before she was looking to go in the other direction and uh, Mejret Scar felt that coming. Uh, I think the, the whole idea of any kind of combination techniques, uh, I think people that think that combination techniques are joined together uh, are mistaken because I really believe, like you've just said there, they've got to be two solid techniques one in order to throw, but if that doesn't happen, you get a reaction. Now, this might be a possibility here for Kowalczyk, because Kowalczyk is trying to turn Mezitskaya over, and if she can just get one little bit of leverage here, she might just do it. The referee will allow this to carry on for a certain amount of time if it's what he thinks is progressive, and if they think it's progressive, they'll let it go if they think it might score in the end. She'd actually blocked it a couple of times. She was quite lucky there because there were a couple of times when she made a push, was unsuccessful, settled and then went, ag and then went again. Normally you make that one push, don't get it, and they, they call a mate. If that push results in a movement and then you start again from that movement, yeah. Anyway, they're back up on their feet now and we've got less than a minute to go. Yeah, this is a battle royal, isn't it? It really is. Kowalczyk and Mezitskaya have come out to fight. Seconds ticking away here, and Kowalczyk is a Wazari up. You have to get to the quarterfinal stages to qualify for any kind of medal chances. If you lose before that, then you're out completely, no chance. Get to the quarterfinals, and if you lose, then you have this match here, which is a final repercharge match. And if you win this, you fight the losing semi finalists from the opposite side of the draw. I think that makes sense, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Ooh. now she gets the Wazari back, Mesit Skaya. With 20 odd seconds left to go. But you know what? That was uh, that was a counter technique. And they might say, uh, let's just have another look at it. And with any kind of, oh no, yeah. it was a direct yeah, yeah. attack. Yeah. So it wasn't counter, it was a direct attack and it gets the score. But any kind of counter, not allowed to go onto your own back to initiate. Yeah, and after that attempt from Kowalczyk, there was just a moment when no, uh, yeah, after the attempt from Kowalczyk, there was a moment when Mejet Sky was standing up and settled herself and then launched her attack. So, yeah, that was the separation. Into golden score then was Zaria Peace and penalty free. That gives an indication of what Neil was saying of just how aggressive these two fighters have been. Here we are with the golden score period. Yeah, well, I mean, you, one of the main reasons for receiving any kind of penalties, and you'll see it indicated on the board if one gets it, a penalty but uh, one of the main reasons is not attacking in the allotted time which is around about 30 to 40 seconds can can be a little bit different depending but these two are attacking and they're attacking hard it's good good strong attacks here 
Another chance for Kowalczyk to work on the ground. Mezichkaya blocked it first time round and Kowalczyk decides, well, I haven't quite got the position that I want, so I'm just going to leave it this time round. Well, the coaches, there's pl plenty of animation from the coaches. They're, they're up in, in between the matters. They're not allowed to shout any kind of advice while they're actually fighting. That's why you'll see the referee sometimes just having a little word there. She's looking for the Sodi Surakumigoshi Mezitskaya, but she can't keep the sleeve long enough. Well, the crowd are loving this, aren't they, as well? I mean, when you consider that most of this crowd, or yeah, a, a high percentage of them, are Japanese. Yeah, maybe a few of them have picked a winner. Yeah, or, they're, or well, but they sorry, really yeah. appreciate the mm. judo, don't they? Which is incredible. And I think that almost everybody in this arena has something to do with judo, or has practiced, or do practice judo. First Shido then, and that's indicated by that little yellow dot there. Three of those, and it's Hunter Kamaki disqualification, and the contest will be awarded to the other person. Measure Scar was penalised for leaving the competition area. Well, they've been pretty good at that, haven't they? They've stayed within the blue matted area. Now then, Mazitskaya. Ochigari, Kowalczyk. Well, this Polish team, this ladies' team, getting stronger and stronger. They've had one or two, well, three or four, actually, that have uh, started to establish themselves regularly in the medals at the Grand Prix Grand Slams that uh, are going on all the way through the year. And it's the IJF World Tour. Two minutes of golden score we've had pretty much and just the addition of a single Shido. I don't think we've explained what golden score is. So any score, actually, one more throw will finish it anyway. Hold down for 10 seconds, arm lock or strangle for a submission. Or two more, more penalties up. Uh, for Mezitskaya, and she's bad on the edge, isn't she, Mezitskaya? But uh, sometimes, no, she's a big, uh, big rotation, landed on the front. Yeah, no, no one can claim anything from that. <laughs> well, a good Barani. <laughs> good gymnastic ability. Yeah, a good twist, yeah. Watch the counter. So the... Uh, the thing is, is that from that counter, you can't go onto your own back and get a score. So uh, it would, uh, even if she had gone on her back, it wouldn't have been a score. Big effort needed here because the longer they stay on the tatami, the worse it's going to be for them later on. They've got to come back. The winner's got to come back for another contest. Every second that they stay out there is draining them. Well, yeah, that's the, that's the main point, isn't it? Because they, they've they got another match after this, but they're really looking forward to that one. <laughs> <laughs> well, the first thing they want to do is to win here, then they'll start thinking about how much energy, energy they've got left. Yeah, Mesut Skaya just has a little look up at the... Uh, at the lights up above and oh now then oh -ho! how close was that Diashi Barai and uh, she sweeps the feet of Kowalczyk and almost scores didn't quite you've got to look at the upper part of the body and the elbow was out if the elbow's out normally that means that the side 
can't make contact with the mat. Russian coach kind of gave gave away his thoughts on it when he put his <laughs> yes, you know, yeah. hands over his face. <laughs> Had it been a score, he'd have been putting his hands up in the air and claiming it. He's got to attack, Mezitskaya. You can't grip on the same side without attacking. He's going to get a penalty for that, I think. She and she does. So she was holding too long on the same side. Any unorthodox grip, you have to go in. Well, they give you time just to kind of set it up, but you've got to go in. This is really physically draining, and it's measured Sky, who looks to be coming off second best there as far as the fitness levels are concerned. Oh, seeing Aggie again. No, it yeah. wasn't. I Oh, she's got it. Yeah, I think for Kowalczyk. But the pull, the attempted pull, didn't really stop the Sianagi from Kowalczyk. She was part way through that, and all that Mezitskaya ended up doing was to pull her on top. Well, Mezitskaya was and did think about the counter, didn't she? That's for sure. That was the process, uh, she, yeah. She started the counter, but it was coming uh, at the, the wrong time. I think they're having a look at it, just in case, but uh, no, they've given it to Kowalczyk. What a match. <laughs> Great opener, that one. Well, Yula Kowalczyk into the bronze medal contest here. About a year ago, she wasn't even sure of her place in the Polish setup because there were a number of others who were vying for that same spot but here she is well she's going to be fighting for third place this is the sea aggie look at the control there well that was absolutely that was the second one wasn't it this was the uh, hmm. first one no definitely this is the second one so she fell on her own back there but uh, it was all part of the movement and she almost helped her didn't she to get the score <laughs> well i think if it had been refereeing he'd have definitely given it hmm. <laughs> that, that was his opinion <laughs> yes i think so Right, we come now to the second of the bronze medal contests in the under 57 kilo category. Sarah Leone no, Sissi yes, of France faces Nora Jakova of Kosovo. It'll be Sissi in the white Jadogi. Jakova in blue. The referee in the middle for this one is Kostenia Balish of Hungary. Sissi has uh, been upsetting the. Uh the favourites, hasn't she? She's uh, been dangerous all the way through this, so uh, I really don't know which way this is going to go. Sisik in white and Jakova of Kosovo in blue, but Jakova so experienced. I think it's you that was uh, just pointing out the fact that this will be three possible medals, won't it, for Kosovo? Yeah, they took or a, a chance of, anyway. Yeah, they took a bronze medal in the under 48 kilo category with Distra Krasniki on the opening down. Yesterday, it was a turn of Mylinda Kelmendi, the current Olympic champ. She ended up with a bronze medal in the under 52 kilo category. Yeah, I mean, that's real depth, isn't it? You're doing something right. And you've still got Loriana Kuka to come at the back end of the week in the under 78 kilo category. She's possibly unfancied, you know, definitely not one of the favourites, but certainly one that could cause some problems. Well, right against left. Very left-handed physique. And also quite a bit shorter. Opted for the inside grip. And I think Jakova is quite happy with that grip on the outside. Got lovely leg techniques, hip techniques, Nora Jakova. She doesn't want to be on the receiving end of one of those huge Uchi matters from Jakova. Yeah, well, I, I think that uh, Sisik is, is kind of waiting for it. And this left against right stance 
is causing a few problems because I think she's afraid to go in, Jacoba, in case she gets sidestepped and then Sasik is going to counter her. And that's exactly what's happening there. She's just moving the hip out the way. Of course, Jacoba wants to go right the way up the middle there with her favorite technique. I like her movement, actually, Sazik. Yeah. She's got yeah. nice, nice, loose, fluid hip movement. Jacoba's just got to keep an eye on the clock, or maybe not an eye, but she's got to have a mental picture of where she is as far as the number of attacks that she's put in. Yeah, just behind at the moment. So a lot of contests being decided on pace, just not quite attacking at the right time. So they pick up a, a penalty and then another one. And then, of course, then you're in danger of being disqualified and not the way to go that's not what we want we want to see really good hip on judo beautiful sasai oh that's going to be a score and it's an Ippon. she just took her the other way and i said she'd been upsetting the odds on the favorites and she just did exactly that Sazik did a beautiful Sasai Surakomiyashi uh, and it kind of revved Jakova up into doing something and she made a mistake, got taken backwards. That was excellent judo from Sazik, I have to say. Yeah, Jacoba there just overstretching things, asking a little bit too much of herself. Bad position. Where, where was she going with that? Well, I think it was like change the direction, look for the Kosoto, but uh, it wasn't on balance, was it? Uh, well, you know, we have good off balance yeah. and bad off balance. That was definitely <laughs> a bad off balance. So Zeke was not in the position where Jacoba launched the attack. By the time Jacoba got to where, you know, that point where she was making contacts, as he could already turned and was able to turn her opponent over pretty easily. Right, we come now to the first of the semi-finals in the under 57 kilo category. Krista Dekuchi of Canada faces Ivelina Ilieva of Bulgaria. It's Dekuchi in the white Jadogi, Ilieva in blue. The referee in the middle for this one is Everardo Garcia of Mexico. Referee from Mexico, Mr. Everardo Garcia. What can you say about Deguchi? Uh, for, for me, she's one of the favorites, uh, always has been in the category. She's just had such amazing form. This lady here, she, uh, Elieva, has surprised all the way through the tournament to get to this semi-final. Gucci, so consistent, and here she is, possibility of uh, being Canada's first ever world champion. They haven't had a world ladies champion. They haven't had a world champion. I'm just trying to think now. I don't think they have. Got a little bit of a blip in uh, her quarterfinal and went was Ari down and she did an amazing technique and said well what do you think of that it kind of revved her up a little bit hey. opens up the account that's Tom and Aggie
fell on her back there. And can't, Ava, you can't give her over. that kind of chance. No, it just fell on her back, literally. And uh, she was right on it there, wasn't she? Deguchi just uh, needs to hold that now for 20 seconds. It's already a Wazari on the board. And oh, no, I think she's going to keep the leg out. Yeah, she will do. Yeah, yeah. She's through to the final, Deguchi. Made that look easy, didn't she? Again. Just, she just had that one score given against her, against Sara Leone Sezik. Just called her that rattle, and then after that, it was just, yeah. you know, another fighter who's come up with a, a, a really attractive and, and overpowering performance. Krista Deguchi of Canada makes her way into the final. Well, there yeah. is a kind of dream final in, in the offing here. And we're going to find out. Well, actually, both finals are dream finals. Because if it is, because the final coming up is Yoshida Tsukasa and Rafaela Silva. If it is that Yoshida wins, it'll be Deguchi going up against the current world champion. If it is that Rafaela Silva wins, it'll be Deguchi going up against the current Olympic champion. Take your pick. Yeah, I, I think you're right. You know, and it could be either one of them uh, because Rafaela Silva, the Olympic champion, went off the boil a little bit for a little while and I think uh, just took a little break. But she's back super strong today. She looks every bit an Olympic champion. So she'll be coming out here against Yoshida. All systems uh, on alert. She really, she really will. <laughs> It'll be uh, all guns blazing. Here we go. Here it is then. Yoshida Tsukasa of Japan faces Rafaela Silva of Brazil. It's Sukasa in, the, sorry, Yoshida in the white jadogi, Silva in blue, the referee in the middle. For this one, it's Lubomir Peter of Australia. Yeah, world champion against the Olympic champion. <laughs> so uh, pretty, pretty high level, semi-final. I think that what's going to happen here, for me, Yoshida didn't look as sharp as I have seen her. This lady here is as sharp as I've ever seen her. So I think that she'll really take the fight to Yoshida. She knows that she can throw with the Uchimata, but I think that she'll try and steamroller her. So I think that you'll see a very aggressive Rafaela Silva and she will not stand for any kind of nonsense from Yoshida as far as that is concerned. So let's see how she plays it. Silver in blue, Yoshida in white. Well, I said she was going to be aggressive. Well, you can cut the atmosphere in here now. My goodness. As expected, every time a Japanese steps out, the, the crowd just erupt. Well, you know, th this crowd is getting three bites at the cherry here. The first one was Krista de Gucci in her semi-final with Ivelina Ilyeva. If you know the background to Deguchi, you know that she's Japanese background, having a Canadian father. So that's why she's fighting for Canada. But she's well known here, lives here, you know, did all her judo here, competed for Japan. So, you know, the Japanese are on her side. Okay, so they've been given one already. Deguchi's in the final. Both fighters pick up uh, penalties, by the way, Yoshida and Silver, uh, 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 Ashido apiece. Now they've got the Yoshida Silver contest in front of them, and should Yoshida win, they're going to get a third uh, chance yeah. for cheering. Yeah, absolutely. She's got to get on the pace, Silver, and I, but saying that, neither one of them are really willing to 
to hook up and uh, to grip. I think it's more Yoshida that wants it, and I, I think Rafaela Silva wants to be the dominant one before she attacks. Ah, drops Sienaghi. Well, it was a Sony, wasn't it, there from Yoshida. This is where she wants to be, Yoshida. She's going to try for the turnover here, and Silva just splays her legs there. She doesn't want any of it. Yeah. <laughs> no thanks. <laughs> yeah, well, it was. It was very much that. And the problem is, is if you start to stand up, that's exactly what they want. Then they tip the balance, and over you go. You're on your back, and you've been held down. Keeps gripping the belt, Rafaela Silva. And Ooh. this is it. This is what she wants, Yoshida. Can she get the lift? Oh, now then. Change the direction there. She's going to hook in for the Juji Katami, but she'll have to put the arm under a bit of pressure. Didn't have it quite deep enough there. Now but there's a chance for oh. um, Silva now for the turnover. This is what she wanted. Oh, <laughs> wow, that nearly backfired on it, Yashida then. The one technique she has on the ground there, Rafaela Silva, Ushiro, is off yeah, it. The yeah. Yashiro reverse Kesagatami. Strong fight for grips, as you would expect. Ah, oh. well, she attacked with Ochi Gary there, Yoshida Silva, then rotated in herself. Never going to be easy, was it? It's always going to be this kind of match. Semi-final, second semi-final. Deguchi already there, already in the final. Look at the pressure from Silva. Okay. Twenty odd seconds left to go. You know that where this one's heading, Neil. <laughs> Looks like it might just be a golden score, this. The crowd and don't um, have any problems with that. They want to see a little bit more. Yeah, well, I, I don't think that uh, either one of them has really looked as if they're going to throw for Ippon. I think this will depend on who's got the best condition. I think the longer it goes on, the more it's going to favour Yoshida. Now she has the sleeve. And again, it's Yoshida. Well, not far off a second penalty up there for Rafaela Silva. <laughs> now changes the side. Right Sienaghi this time from Yoshida. Obatori, she's looking for the Obatori Gaeshi. She wants that arm first. She's going to get the arm. This isn't a good place for Silva. She's still looking for the leverage here. The referee letting this carry on. 
He's got to let it go. Now the overturning gay is she. Then she climbs over, she'll tie up the top half and then she'll try and get the leg out. Rafaela Silva in trouble. <laughs> you see <laughs> flicking of the leg as one tries to wrap the leg up and the other tries to free it. She's just trying to get the angle here. So, my goodness me. He let it go on. How long was that? It must have been about a minute there. <laughs> Rafaela Silva took a time getting up there, needs time to recover. Saying that, it takes just as much energy, doesn't it? When you're trying to get some, your leg out, I've been in situations where I've been trying for the Juji Katami and you have to choose a time to abandon it. And that's exactly what happened there. Second penalty goes up to Rafael Silva. Koichi this time from Yoshida. Starting to climb on top of this match. Rafaela Silva. Doesn't quite know how to climb on top of this. He's just behind on pace. See it again. That's yes, it. It's all is. over. Hippon scores. Yoshida's through. She didn't have anything left. Well, I think you picked that out reasonably early. The, the fact, I mean, you may not have, have explained it fully, but the longer the contest went on, the better it was for, for Yoshida. The power game that, that you know, Silva brings possibly was waning there. And like you say, there wasn't enough left to stop her and keep her out. No, you can see on her face the, the body language said it all because the body language said, what do I do? What do I have to do? But she was behind on pace all the way through it. Yoshida climbed on top of the match. She knows it. It was tactically a very good match. So I was talking about three, the, the, the three things to look at in this 57 kilo category that, that we had in front of us. A, a top draw contest with Deguchi, where you know she won her semi-final, put her in the final. A top draw semi-final between Yoshida and Silva, which that was. And now we're looking for a top draw final between Yoshida Takasa of Japan and Krista Deguchi of Canada. It's going to be a magical one. It will be a really good one because they'll both go for Ippon. I'm almost certain. I don't think it'll be tactical. It's the same uh, Nakamura up there in the stands and uh, used to be the coach of my wife. And uh, of course... Uh, spotted him there. Yeah, spotted him right there yeah. in the crowd. And I don't mean to take anything away from the under 57 kilo category, but a lot of people in here are here to watch the upcoming category. That's the under 73 kilo category because the big name in there is Ono Shoei. We will come to him, but before that, we've got the first of the repechage contests. Toha Budpo of Israel faces uh, Beruzi Kojazoda of Tajikistan. It is football in the white jirogi, Kojazoda in blue. The referee in the middle for this one is Mathieu Bataille of France. Well, these have met once before, these two. And uh, it was Kojazoda of Tajikistan, who's walking out here, who was the winner then. Kaji Zoda has just looked solid all day, but of course, Toha Butbul of Israel, a huge throw up. I think both of these are going to be looking to score Ippon.
Quite a big cheering section up there for the Israeli fighter. Well, they have a, a really strong men's and ladies team, Israel. Now, thanks to their coaches, of course, who are doing an amazing job there for them. And every one of them can throw. Every one of them. Exciting, explosive judo. Oh, look at that! That's going to be a score. Was that scored there? Kajizoda right the way underneath there for the Sodi Surakomigosh. Off the sleeve. Look at the hips pop across there. And Buttball lands on his side. Two of those, and it's all over. He doesn't know what to do with him, but Paul. He's being dominated grip-wise by Kojizoda. How important are the grips? You know, they just play such a big part in our sport. They really do. And it might look to, uh, to the public that people are just pecking away at the jackets, but the jacket uh, plays such a huge part in the initiation of our techniques. And that's it, it's all over. It's uh, Wazali Awazeti upon, and Koshizoda has taken apart Buttball. Two beautiful techniques, totally different directions, two totally different techniques, and he takes Buttball over for two Wazaris. What a performance. He's really stepped up today, has Koshizoda. I don't think there are a lot of people putting him down for this kind of performance and certainly not to be in there you know in the last what we're talking about for six people because that's all it's going to be all it's going to come down to now yeah but i mean not only that 90 fighters started this category 90 fighters probably 20 of them could have meddled here <laughs> which is remarkable if not a few more you know it's yeah. 20 that could medal in a world championship and, and only shows, four will Sorry, and only four on. will yeah i was going to say but i mean it just shows the depth doesn't it there was the first one beautiful sodi sort of kamigoshi sodi meaning sleeve so any attack off the sleeve just pops the hips across and this time instead of going forwards he takes uh football uh, backwards Great change of direction. Talk about action, reaction. There we can see it at the very best. We've got a second um, repechage contest coming up now. Bilal Chiloglu of Turkey is up against Soman Mahmadbekov of Tajikistan. It's Chiloglu in the white jadogi, Mahmoud Bekov in blue. The possibility of sending two players in, in one weight category is demonstrated perfectly here. You've got the two Tajiks now. Well, and, and I was saying earlier that they haven't got that many fighters of world class, but they've got two in the under 73 <laughs> kilos 73. category. And, of course, the fact that it might be just a sorting out of who's going to go to the Olympic Games, because one of these is definitely going to go to the Olympic Games. Matt Medbikov looks fairly similar. They, they have a similar kind of a stance as they come out. Siloglu of Turkey, well, he's been having a, a superb tournament as well. And one of these is going to be fighting for third place. 
Now remember, after this uh, this repercharge match, semi-finals occur, and then they fight the loser of the opposite side. Mariano dos Santos of Brazil taking charge of this one. I'm not sure whether or not he... We may have seen Chiloglu. I doubt very much whether he received Mahmoud Bekov. Sometimes even the referees like to know what the fighting styles are like. And, you know, you see, especially when it comes to groundwork. If they know them well, they know what moves are coming and they just, you know, give that little bit of time. Whereas if, if they if they don't know, they see them pause, they say, okay, nothing's happening here, you know. I think that's part of the skill, isn't it, of the yeah. referee at, at, high, at the highest, highest level. level. It is uh, reading the match and what's going to happen. And then, of course, uh, also knowing, knowing the fighters. Yeah, when we moved to this style of selecting referees for the biggest events and having the circuit going i think that the refereeing levels began to really take off well especially now that of course the the refereeing and coaches uh seminars they come together they have to come on the tatami they have to go through the process of learning the techniques that are being performed and i think that's the only way we have to upskill whether you're a referee coach or a fighter, it's all about upskilling. Well, this could really, and I know it's a cop out, but uh, it could go either way, <laughs> couldn't it? Uh, but, and I mean that because I, really, both of them have been performing well all day. Both of them unexpected to be here. Well, they're having a real problem getting that second hand on. Okay. It's because of the left against right, right-handed Chiloglu. Medbekov is left-handed and uh, so therefore quite okay. often because of the stance the hand is away from your opponent Stop. and there's a, a wide gap that you've got to fill and of course if you reach into that gap sometimes it leads to the advantage of the opponent. Mahmoud Be Bekov picked up a, a very unusual penalty there. He was penalised for just hook tap hooking the leg on and just leaving it there. <laughs> yeah, but you can't just dangle the leg in and that, that, that's what they've stopped. You can't just dangle the leg in and then just uh, uh, suddenly switch direction. You've got to put the leg in and then go off it. Yeah, I, I, I don't see that that penalty just put propping the leg against your opponent's leg is any different from blocking. You know, you put it being, putting an arm out and, and pushing it into your opponent's ribs because you're blocking that opponent's leg. Well, so that's a negative with, action. Yeah, so, yeah. No, I agree. And that, that's why they did stop it. They said you, you, it has to be with a, not with a negative okay. intention, but with a positive intention to throw. Yeah, it could set something up. You yeah, know, because what... Tap there and a second later, you know, work something from it. Yeah, and what happens is, is that you feed the leg in so that you can go up the middle and, uh, and get in between your partner's legs sometimes in order to throw. He just left it there. <laughs> A penalty up there for yeah. Chiloglu. Half a minute left to go. As you said, Neil, neither of these look, you know, like dangerous throwers in this contest although they've both thrown well earlier on yeah they have they're kind of cancelling each other out and uh, that's what he wants there you can see that Magmed Bakov trying to get on the inside there on Chiloglu they're both afraid so I think they're both of them feeling the power and the danger from the other one second penalty picked up by Bilal Chiloglu there for that 
false attack. So he's the one with the disadvantage as we move into the golden score period. He takes two penalties into the golden score period. Mahmoud Bekov just the one. So a single error by Chiloglu will put him out. Whereas if for some reason both are passive, which is quite often the case, you can slow things down, you can make it difficult for your opponent. And if you both pick up penalties, then Mahmoud Bekov comes off, comes out the winner. An unattractive tactical proposition, I know, but let's hope we don't see it. Yeah, it's, uh, it's not what we want to see, but uh, look at that. He's not even gripping the sleeve there, Chiloglu. That might be it. It just might give him the third penalty, Chiloglu. Yeah, he gets it. Oh, just dropped, uh, you know, what does he expect? He, he's saying that he just dropped on his back in order to try a technique, but he did, but it, it didn't uh, break the balance of his opponent. It won't matter how many times he remonstrates, and it <laughs> change the decision. Worst thing you can do, isn't it? Stay, stay out there and try and change yeah. everybody's mind because it's not going to happen. And just to finish off, as we were watching Mahmoud Be Bekov uh, come leave the tatami, I was looking at Bilal Chiloglu, who went to the edge of the mat, gathered himself, gave a deep bow, and walked off. It took him, what, five or six seconds to yeah. soak it up and accept the fact that it was a third Shida, not one, not two, but a third error. And all the referee does is record the errors. He doesn't invent them or make them up. No, exactly. <laughs> so, well, look at that. He, there's, he didn't yeah. break anybody's balance there, that's for sure. And he's had a look at the, the big screen where they showed the replay. And to, to his credit, you know, he's walked out with the, 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 the hall nodding. Just felt bad at the time. I think so, and, well, he'll have to accept it. I think this is everybody's favourite, isn't it? Just about to come out. We come now to the first of the semi-finals in the under-73 kilo category. Ono Shoe of Japan faces Denis Iyatsev of Russia. It'll be Ono in the white jadogi, Iyatsev in blue. The referee in the middle for this one is Turbat Ensetek of Mongolia. Neil, I think you've been waiting for this one as well. I have, and, well, whatever you do, don't look at the world rankings because these guys have been choosing carefully, very carefully, not to do certain uh, of the world ranking events, just so that they qualify enough and then hoping to get higher qualification points at this particular event. And this man here is the world champion, quite clearly the number one in the world. But uh, he's got a very, very dangerous opponent, opponent with Ayatia. Looking incredible though, oh no. And Ayatchev knows exactly what he's up against. There have been a few fighters who've come to the tatami that have looked invincible. Ono is one of them. Huge task here in front of Denis Yatsev. Abe Uta yesterday gave that impression as well, as did Maruyama Joshiro. Every time they walked to the mat, you had this feeling this was the, the, the person to beat. And I think it's Ono in this one, in this division. Almost counted. Wow, <laughs> yeah, and uh, that's what he does well, I had said. And that's why I say, you know, it's, uh, he's just not going to roll over for him. Incredibly fast, oh, so to Gary there from Ono. Ayatsev will use his feet in order to upset the balance of Ono. And what I can tell you is that there's a big possibility of Ayatsev going over here for Ippon. But if he can hold off for the duration of the first part of the contest and upset the rhythm of Ono, 
knock him off balance all the time. Oh, what a Uchi Mata. Well, I didn't, well, I want to see the uh, actual landing of that. I thought it was a full somersault, but. Yeah, I, I think he goes onto his knees here, doesn't he? Yeah, I, 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 well, I'd like to see it from another angle, but I didn't, th I didn't think that was a score. You've got to see it from the right angle. She was right there. But I think they'll take yeah. it off. <laughs> well, a, a great example there, everybody, that you don't score the fly, flight, but you score the landing. And it doesn't matter how big it is. The definition of a Nippon is flat on the back or on the back, most of the back with impetus. If you can see the back patch, then it's a Wazari score. Half the contest gone. I feel like saying Iyatsev is still in it. <laughs> <laughs> Dear. Tempted to be that you know, disparaging, but he is hanging on, isn't he? Well, he just touched the rafters for a second there, but he managed to uh, get out. Now then, Osada Gary again. Ayatsev holds off. <laughs> oh, what a match we have. How appreciative are this crowd? So is Shido up there for Ayatsev? Got a minute and a half left to go. I wonder if within the next minute we'll see Ayatsev just begin to open up a little bit, having weathered the initial storm. Yeah, somebody just asked me, they said, what makes Ono so special? And I said, well, his variation of technique. Not only that... Oh, Goes again, look at that, he's not... Oh. Well, was that all part of one movement? I guess it was, he gets the Wazari for it. Starts off with the Uchimata, didn't quite look as if it was... Uh, it wasn't going to go up into the air, but he changes the direction, and he's still on, and he's still going. Was it a throw off the ground? I, uh, I personally think, I, I think, yeah, it was a throw off the ground. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't think that was a score. I feel it's generous. Yeah. <laughs> it's taken yeah. off. And, uh, well, I'm glad we're right there because... Yeah, really, we don't <laughs> want to get bollocking. No. <laughs> So Ayatsev does breathe again, absolutely. Archimata oh, again! Oh, and Ayatsev is straight, straight onto, onto the, the arm. arm. He's straight onto the arm. And now, oh, oh no, just about <laughs> manages to pull that one in. Brilliant stuff. This is what, well, semi-finals of the World Championships are all about. Oh. And as we said, as the contest goes on for longer and longer, the Yarts are just beginning to develop things. He can't get off that one, however. No, that was it. Was Harry this time? Absolutely for certain. And he's straight into the hold down. Only needs 10 seconds now. And Diatsev knows that he's not getting out of that one. Oh, no, goes through to the final. Absolute brilliance. My goodness me, we saw such a variation there. And he was made to work for it, wasn't he? You yeah. know, I had to have yeah. credit to him. He must have climbed off about five different techniques. And in the end, was it Uchi Mata or Sienagi? No, it was Tomanagi. Or Osoto. He had about three Osoto Garys <laughs> as well.
Well, Dennis Yartsev gave it his best shot. That, that is, the, is, you know, a good thing to say. He didn't come out of there and lose any kind of, you know, his reputation is intact as one of the top fighters, and he lost to one best, of the, the best in the world. Yes. Yeah. Whatever tactics they decided to to choose, I think they chose well because he was still in there, you know, in, into the last few seconds. A risky, a risky thing because it almost felt as though they were saying, "Go and burn yourself out." And and every time you attack, I'm going to try and find some way to get off it. Maybe he did find a couple of ways to get off, but he was also, you know, lucky with the Wazaris a couple of times, you know, yeah. another centimetre here or there, and they would have been scores. Well, exactly, and uh, but in the end, that Tom and Aggie did yeah. enough for that. He catches him. There's still seconds on the clock here. It, it isn't all over. Not at all. But uh, it is as soon as he gets his head down there for the old side commie. Just needs 10 seconds for the old side commie this time because there's a Wazari on the board. Ayatsev, he gave it his all. That was brilliant stuff, it really was. Credit to him, and he's still in with a chance of a medal. This is the beautiful shot, our action shot from love different that. angles. We do love it. I, I went up to see the placing of the cameras, and they are all around, all around the venue. Every little dot that you can see up there is a camera. Hundreds of them. Honestly. Wow. That's amazing. Really incredible. Right, we come to the second semi-final in the other 73 kilo category. Rustam Orozhov of Azerbaijan faces teammate Hidayat Hidarov. It'll be Orozhov in the white jadogi, Hidarov in blue. The referee in the middle for this one is Yevgeny Rakhine of Russia. We were talking, weren't we, about... Uh, having depth in a weight category, two Aziris here in the semi-final. One of them is going to go to the final. Orozhov is the world number one, which says that he's not the world champion. Obviously, we know that Ono is the world uh, number one. He's the leading fighter in the world. But this man here is the world number one on paper. But Haidarov is 2-0 up in their head-to-heads. He has beaten his teammate on two different occasions, and here they are now fighting to get through to the final of the World Championships. One of them guaranteed, as Azerbaijan are going to have a world finalist. The other point is here is that Orozhov, who fought uh, Ono in the Olympic final and a world final, has always lost to Ono. Look at that. Shake hands. They're not allowed to do no. that. They should only bow, but. Uh, they're teammates. Teammates, uh, am I quite correct there? Or uh, they are uh, colleagues <laughs> at this moment, not mates. I think I'm just going to go with their both as Aries. You, know. you can't get that one wrong. Yeah. No, you can't. <laughs> and it's funny because the only people who've done the hand slap are the people from the same country. Yes. Everyone else just just bows. Yeah, and and also the referees have allowed, <laughs> and they've allowed uh, turned it, yeah. a blind Except eye the on Japanese. it. Japanese, well, we, that, that's just their sport, isn't it? Yes, they don't hand tap anyway. Well, it comes from wrestling traditions, doesn't yeah. it? That's Ooh. it. Oh, look at that! Hyder off there, just <laughs> latched around that the outside of the leg there. Well, that isn't in the Gokyo. I tell you now, the Gokyo being the, the first 40 techniques of uh, the origins of judo, and uh, that doesn't look anything anywhere near it, but so effective because we have hybrid techniques that have developed from these basic uh, fundamental principles. And some of the stuff that's coming out from some of these fighters are doing some amazing stuff. We're both a bit tentative, and this happens a lot, actually, when you get uh, two fighters from the same country. They know each other absolutely back to front. Stop. Probably Stop. As, as well at certain times with 
certain uh, t uh, squad trainings and stuff like that. They will have had to have fight, fought each other and trained with each other. Both fighters picked up a penalty for avoiding to take a grip there. I think the other thing as well is that they have respect for each other and you can see that, you know, because quite often you, it can be, you can tell when there's, uh, you know, no kind of friendship between, <laughs> between them. But uh, these two ha have a lot of respect for each other. Yeah, there's a feeling that you get when you're watching a contest, if there's any, what we call needle in there. And there, there isn't here, this is just straightforward judo on judo. Yeah, it is. It's just a straightforward match. See who comes out the winner. Left against right, of course. Uh, we can see that, can't we? But they've both got the sleeve here. So two penalties at each. Now, we, we've only, well, we've gone two and a half minutes. There's two Shidos apiece now. And that means that one of them's probably going to go. Well, it, it's going to be disqualified. Th there was complete silence before as everyone was just on the edge of their seat here but now there's a bit of a buzz because there's a realization that not only that the, the, does the throw come into it a single shido is will put one of these out yeah i mean they've got two chances of uh, a medal both of them have they'll have to fight for third heaven forbid uh, could you imagine if both of them do nothing and they both get disqualified it has happened once. It has happened. Uchimata there from Orozhov. And again. Haydarov has got to come back with something here. He can't afford to run the risk of his world championship, a bid for a gold medal, go missing on the back of a third Shido. I can't even imagine it. You know, I, just, I think you're almost... Uh, better just to throw caution to the wind and just have a, a go at it. And when it did happen, actually, Shido's, uh, three Shido's apiece. It was uh, two Japanese fighting each other. It didn't go down very well. That's going to be a was yeah, He's going to have it. to tap anyway. He's going to get it, is he? No, he didn't. Well, I'm not so sure that wasn't a score either. I, I kind of thought that was a score. Um, so does Orozhov. And they're going to have a look at it. Orozhov yeah. knows now that his chances have just increased. Oh, no. Yeah, he well, was pulling on the arm lock, I think, yeah, rather no, than was executing. Pulling. It wasn't. Yeah. You know, you've got to be able to name it, haven't you? Yeah. You've got to be able to name whatever it is. And yes, you're right. He was, he was more concentrated Tricked on, on the, the arm. arm. Safe. Yeah. <laughs> He pulls him down onto his side, but for me, his intention is to apply the arm lock. So he's, not, he's not actually in the process of throwing him, he's in the process of applying the arm lock, and, and he falls onto his side. He's got lucky, he's lucky there, Orzhov, because they've seen that as the fighter was pulled down onto his side. So we're going to give a Wazari. But I, I like to, to, to think that Orozhov intended to throw him with some kind of technique that we could identify, some waza that we could classify, you know. He's attempting to apply Juju Gatami. And, you know, I don't normally see Wazari scored for an attempted Juju Gatami. Well, I think you're right about Haidarov as well. I, I think Haidarov will be absolutely gutted that his, uh, you know, there was a possibility of being world champion here. Wow. So we're going to see a repeat of the Olympic final with Orozhov and Ono. And I can tell you that uh, every time they've met, it's not been good for Orozhov. Right. Now, there's another look at this. There's another angle that, that we've got here, which shows Orozhov pulling down the arm as part of the, part of the throwing process. He doesn't actually look to apply the arm lock until they've landed, and then he, he tries to apply the arm lock. I hadn't seen that. There, we've got six, seven different cameras here. That, w one of those angles showed him actually doing the key eye as he pulled him down. That, to me, then suggests that Orozhov's intention was to 
get a score. So that's why they gave it. Right, coming up next, the first of the bronze medal contests in the under 57 kilo category, Yula Kowalczyk of Poland faces Iwelina Ilieva of Bulgaria. It'll be Kowalczyk in the white jerogi, Ilieva in blue. The referee in the middle for this one is Amano Akiko of Japan. Neil, there we go. Well, I think that uh, for both of these to be fighting for a, a world medal is absolutely amazing. Amazing for them, amazing for their countries. What a performance from both. Kowalczyk has been performing so well. And Elieva as well. Elieva also way above, you know, not way above their expectations. I mean, I'm sure they came in here thinking we can do very well here, but it is the World Championships. So Kowalczyk in white, Elieva of Bulgaria in blue, and away we go. Bronze medal match then, first one up. Two bronze medal matches. And then the final. Kowalczyk has a left-handed stance. She's got a left-handed grip. And she's going to look for the right-handed Sodisura Komigoshi. That's, uh, that's what she wants. So she'll want that sleeve, that right hand on her, uh, the opponent's sleeve, the left sleeve. She'll want to get rid of that, take it off her jacket, and then she'll go in. It's about 10 seconds off a Shido apiece, these two. They're not gripping up and they're not going for it. Well, they've got to attack. They have to. So a minute and a half here without anything. One Shido on the board and two more. Disqualification, we've already seen that possibility. Eva looking for the counter. Plenty of advice on offer for Kowalczyk. At the moment, no score. Kowalczyk has got her own Uchigari. She's had to fight off the Uchigari efforts from Ilieva on three or four occasions so far. And she's going to launch her own. Reverse Sianagi there, Kowalczyk. Well, she has had some sec success with it. Why not give that a shot? Straightforward Marotis Senagi is also pretty good from Kowalczyk, but she hasn't been able to get the, the feet in the right place. Tried on a couple of occasions and failed so far. We've got a little over a minute left to go. Both fighters picked up a penalty, but waiting for the first score. Well, that's going to be a second penalty. Which way is this one going to go? And it's going to go to Kowalczyk. Well, difference, uh, I, I, 
there the referee is reading the positive negative gripping strategies and Kowalczyk didn't want Elieva to get two hands on. Now Elieva though, she's got two hands on, she needs to attack. Yes, it is. It's Kowalczyk that keeps taking the grip off. She's not happy with it at all. At all. Oh, look at that. She's still going. She's got it. She gets the hip on as well. That reverse C and Aggie, she just kept at it. She's interested in well, the Osakomi. Yeah, well, she's holding it <laughs> yeah, because, yeah. you know, if that gets changed to a Wazari. But uh, she gets given the hip on for it because she landed absolutely on her back. Kowalczyk is the bronze medalist. Well, as, as I was saying earlier on, a year ago, couldn't, you couldn't have thought this a year ago. She, that she wasn't sure to be Poland's number one. I'm not even sure if she is the highest. And there's Dad. Yeah. <laughs> Not sure how dad got down onto the field of play, but he, he managed it. He was there, I would be. <laughs> Fantastic. Here it goes. Reverse seeing Aggie, she's still driving, still pushing. Look at her push and look at that. Oh, right the way over that back patch. Landed clean on her back. Didn't have as much impetus as it could have done. Well-deserved bronze medal there. Poland are on the medal. They're on the medal tally, and that was brilliant stuff. Coming up next, the second of the bronze medal contests in the under 57 kilo category. Sarah Leone Sisik of France faces Rafaela Silva of Brazil. It'll be Sisik in the white Jadogi, Silva in blue, the referee in the middle for this one. Is Roberta Chiolia of Italy. Well, I'm impressed with Sisik, I have to say. Totally different style from Raffaella Silva. Raffaella Silva will have to pick herself up here. The Olympic champion was well beaten in her semi-final. Yoshida did a, a really good job on Rafaela Silva. Took her over for Ippon in the end. And Sisik, she lost to Deguchi. I think that Sazik will try and get that left arm on the inside of Rafaela Silva. And I think Rafaela Silva will try and stop her from doing it. Great story with Rafaela Silva coming from the favelas of Brazil. And uh, she was one of the ones that was brought through on a, on a special program for the favelas. And she was the first Olympic or world medalist ever to come out of the program. Just started as a youngster.
Ashiwaza from Sasik. Now she's got the arm on the inside. Ashiwaza again. I like the Sasai that she uses. She uses it just to break the balance of her opponent. Well, she hasn't uh, even started yet, Silva. Sasik all the way so far. Half the contest gone, just a single Shido against Rafaela Silva at the moment. Sisi giving the Olympic champion a good run for her money. Yeah, I think so far, doing everything right. She wants that left hand on the inside, Sisi. Does most of her judo from there. I think Rafaela Silva, this is left to left, remember? So. He who dares with that front leg there. Oh, yeah. and it was uh, Sasik that went for it. It was left to left. She tried for the Sasai again and uh, then got countered. One minute and 20 seconds left in this contest. Trying to waste some time, valuable seconds. Referee not having any of it. Tries the Sasai. Look at that. Sumio Tosh from Rafaela Silva. That hand movement there drives the seat to the mat. Inside the last minute, Rosari on the board for Silva. Sasik chasing now, time running out. And she is chasing, isn't she? She's uh, getting desperate now, 44 seconds. Silva. Oh, she just had their hand on, on, on the, the belt. belt there, <laughs> yes. Oh, That's got to be a penalty. Pretty, That'll be it. a second one up to Silva. 26 seconds left. She's going to get a second penalty here. Just flopped onto her face. No pull. No grip. Ugh. Is she going to throw this away? We've seen it happen. So did Sarakomigoshi there from Sasik. Mm, she's had a good look, has Miss Key earlier at the gi. <laughs> she didn't tell her. <laughs> that was good. <laughs> Sasik thought, what are you looking at? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I better do it. Here we go. Here's the chase. Go now. Four seconds left. Couldn't come up with another attack. Silva manages to keep Sisik out, and it's a bronze medal for Rafaela Silva. Both yeah. fighters down. Silva will be back up on her feet in a second.
pretty tough. Or terrible time for both of them. Yeah. That was a good match, wasn't it? You know, they, yeah, they both the of them went yeah. for it. Well, it goes to show as well, doesn't it? You know, that reaction there, uh, how much this means to her, you know, because she has had her ups and downs. Uh, after the Olympic Games, had a little bit of a, a down. She's uh, started to build it up, back up again. This lady here, I think we're going to see a lot more of, that's for sure. Made a mistake there, didn't she? She went for it, went for the Sassai. As she went for the Sassai, the hand movement from Rafael Silva just took her down for a Wazari. It could have been more as well, couldn't it? <laughs> There's the flight. What a beautiful shot. Great Tewaza from Rafaela Silva. Getting tearful there. <laughs> I was going myself. We come now to the final of the under 57 kilo category. Yoshida Tsukasa of Japan faces Krista Deguchi of Canada. It'll be Yoshida in the white jadogi, the Gucci in blue. The referee in the middle for this one is Raul Camacho of Spain. Well, I know somebody who's going to be absolutely cheering in the UK at the moment, but uh, very Canadian. And great opportunity for first ever world champion for Canada. From Spain, Mr. I think it's going to be an absolutely cracker of a final, this, because I think they're going to go for it, both of them. They both can have Neuweiser, they both have transition, and they both got big throws. One apiece at the moment. And they've, they've got previous. <laughs> <laughs> they have. 3rd time they've met, who's going to go 2-1 up? You yeah, know, it's quite possible, Neil, that it's the third time that they've met on the IJF World Tour, which is what our records state, but as, as Taguchi came from Japan, there's probably a lot more in the background there. You know, high school, university, all sorts of things, you know, club, the company that, that, that she used to work for. I think Yoshida is with Komatsu, there's a whole group of yellow vests up there. There's no protest going on, but there's a whole group of <laughs> yellow vests up in the background, all cheering for Yoshida. Here we go. Oh! oh. Was now, that the Ashiwaza? Oh, I, I thought think she so. went down. Right. It was I just think a it slip was then. at the same time. Good decision. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> My goodness. That was almost over before it even began, wasn't it? Uchimata there from Deguchi. Here is someone who can match Yoshida for expertise in Niwaza. Yeah, that's what I was saying just as they were walking out there that that would be an interesting little exchange there. Here she goes. She wants it, Deguchi. Yeah, th this is the thing. And, and um, a, pr a problem for Yoshida is, is probably, you know, in the back of her mind, I can't afford to make a slip here, which no. means that her... Her Tachiwaza attacks have got to be absolutely solid. Can't give Deguchi an in. Yoshida, though, I have to say, she has an incredible work rate. And Deguchi has got to be very careful that she doesn't fall behind on pace here. At the moment, it's Yoshida coming forward to 
initiate. Ah, oh, now then, Tom and Aggie there from Deguchi. And likewise, Deguchi's got to be careful with her Tachi was her efforts. She doesn't leave herself open. Yeah, that looked pretty solid, didn't it? Both a bit wary of each other, as you can imagine. Taguchi. <laughs> ah, listen to everybody. They all know something's coming here. Got to be inside the arm, inside the elbow. Not there now. No, nowhere near. She wasn't. But uh, this is where I think she's dangerous with the obituary. And I don't think that Taguchi can stay there because. Although, Newaza doesn't actually count as a score, which I always find incredible. You have two minutes of Newaza and then get up and get a Shido because you didn't attack in standing. But here we go, look at this. Taguchi in trouble. You're a bit too clever. You, know, she's, you see, well, I'm not saying you see, but at home, because I'm not going to teach Neil anything, the timing for the escape is all important. She knew that was, she knew the turnover was coming. She timed it rightly, timed it correctly on this occasion. <laughs> she did, look at that, the time <laughs> just gone. It's a tactical match. We didn't expect for it not to be anything else, you know, but it, it was always going to be tactical. They left, left against right, they can't catch the sleeve. They're both finding it difficult to catch the sleeve. Yoshida catching it a little bit more than Taguchi. And for me, it's Yoshida now changes to the Yoko Otoshi there and uh, changes to the other side. And it's going to be Taguchi in a second that's going to get a penalty. Yep. And it's going to be all about pace, this. I think it's the, the first time that I have uh, seen it that Deguchi doesn't absolutely dominate the grips and control the actual uh, contest. And, uh, you know, Yoshida's turned it on her and she's controlling it at the moment. It's into golden score. That Shido gets carried over. Yoshida. Just stepping things up now, Yoshida. This last 35, 40 seconds. She's really using that arm as a lever here. Well blocked. But it leaves Yoshida as the aggressor in the last few attacks. Deguchi's got to come up with something now. Yeah, it's starting to go in now, Deguchi. I think she kind of realizes it. Well, we have seen it change direction. It hasn't always gone according to the script. Sometimes the run of play can be changed. So Deguchi just needs to start again. Oh, Chigari, Deguchi. Needs a couple of good attacks here. And she needs to leave that one alone, mm, I would say. That wasn't the most attractive of Shitemi was her effort, was it? Was it? The last thing she wants to do now is to pick up. Ooh. Oh, now then, is she on the arm? Yeah. 
So again, Yoshida. And she's ramping on the arm. Can she hook in? Deguchi holding on. Yeah, I was going to say, that was the Mate then, yeah. Good, yeah. The, the perfect timing for the Mate. You know, as soon as she had to go back to the start, that was the time to call it. Raul Camacho got that one perfectly right. Gave her plenty of time, but when she had to reset, sorry. <laughs> Two minutes of golden score. They've had a little as she was there from Deguchi. Maybe a stab at Ojigari, but not a great deal else, to be honest. She's looking for the Uchi matter all the time. Have to be careful of the Sakeshi. Oh, that, that, that's yeah, going to be a penalty. A slip, yeah. That's going to be uh, that's going to be one each, I think. Can't not give it. She just fell on her back. Yeah. So yeah. she gets it as well. You have to break their balance, especially with any of the drop techniques. Oh, oh now then, Taguchi. Oh, oh yeah, yes, she's done there it. it is. Taguchi's done it. Yes. Taguchi is the world champion. Wow. That's what was really needed, some movement to allow a second stab at something. After the first effort, Yoshida was looking to reset, didn't have time, the Gucci was in. That was excellent stuff, the Gucci chose her moment. She's been the lady on form all year, I have to say. It's going to sink in soon. Yeah, that was amazing, really. Canada have a gold medal. Canada have their very first world champion. There'll, there'll be no trouble with the interviews. <laughs> no, there won't. And uh, massive celebrations in Canada. Hopefully you'll get in this commentary as well. That was a brilliant performance from Deguchi. Look at that. And just there is your transition from Newaza to standing because it wasn't over. It just wasn't over. Deguchi, certainly, it wasn't over for her. Wow. And that Tani Otosh there. Brilliant stuff from Deguchi. And that was real opportune judo. She's a new champion. Sasha Mamedovic <laughs> off his feet. <laughs> Out of his box. <laughs> and so he should as well. Absolutely brilliant stuff from the coaching staff there in Canada. And, well, for everybody, what a result. Everybody in Canada, because uh, Canadian judo, we know that it's been going up and up and up. But now they have a world champion. Wow. Catch right. our breath. We come now to the first of the bronze medal contest in the under 73 kilo category. Beruzi Khorzazoda of Tajikistan faces Denis Iyatsev of Russia. It'll be Khorzazoda in the white jadogi, Iyatsev in blue. The referee in the middle for this one is Mariano Dos Santos of Brazil. I'm just looking at these two now, I'm just uh, wondering what's going to happen because <laughs> I think we're going to see some fireworks. I think Ayechev, we know that he has fantastic as she was. He can pull an Ippon out of anywhere. And uh, Zoda, he can also pull it out of nowhere. And I think that uh, we're going to see an Ippon. Ayechev in the semi-final was beaten by the best man. I don't think he'd argue that. But, uh, I think he fancies himself for a bronze medal here. Well, as you said, Neil, they're both very attacking fighters. So the likelihood is that this is not going to go the distance. It's, the arts of may still be smarting from that loss. Might be a little bit of... Um, Payback, and at the moment, Hoja Zoda is in the way of 
on the, on the receiving end of it. Yeah, what unusual technique he has. Kocha Zoda is coming in for techniques, very low Ochi Gary, uh, but it, and then he just slips into a Sienagi, but uh, not with the traditional way of coming in for it. Strong fight for the grips, as always. And the Atsev just looking for the opportunity for the Ashiwaza, but like I say, very unusual. Kudrizoda not, uh, not gripping in the normal places, and that makes it awkward for you. Well, they have such depth, haven't they, the Russians, in quite a few of the categories. Uh, two in this week, I think. Oh. Um, Musa Mugrushkov, lost out. Yeah. And there are plenty of others. Well, that, exactly. And uh, Mugrushkov, it looks like uh, they've got Mugrushkov and Ayatsev going head to head for the Olympic place. But, uh, of course, this will put Ayatsev in the hot seat, I think. Left Sienaghi this time from Kodjazoda. Oh, now that's going to be a score. Was there he scored? Ayachev. Ashigaruma, is he on the arm? I think he's on the arm. I think he's got it straight. Yeah. Now can he get the leverage? Just wants to bring him it's back down. It's not Mate yet. Yeah. Oof. Sort of make call me that. It's kind of a mixture, wasn't it? There yeah. of. Uh... <laughs> Ashi Garuma Makikomi, I think we'll call it. I think that's what it is. So that's two penalties up there. Kojido's, uh, Kojizoda. This is, uh, this is dangerous. This is where it can end in an Ippon. Watch this because uh, somebody, something's going to load up here. Oh! And that, well, you want to know, Sumio Toshi in a competition situation, and that's what he was doing there, Ayetsev. It was all hands that, just trying to get the upper body going forward and the momentum going forward in order to take his opponent over. <laughs> 30 seconds, just over 30 seconds to go and I had to have he can uh, taste it now. Light at the end of the tunnel. Even if he gets a penalty now, if they yeah. both get penalties, it's going to be all over. He won't mind him getting one. Oh, that's going to be one for sure. On his own. Yeah, he <laughs> did that on his own. He didn't need anybody else to do that for him, did he? So he needs to stay upright. It'd be a tragedy if he did that again. The last 10 seconds. And I'm he telling you, head I'm telling you, he could throw this away if he's not careful. You, you know, in the end, I don't think they'll give it. 
because Hoja Zoda had, had the dominant, he had the strength, he did nothing with it. No, he's just after the third penalty, yeah. uh, of course, and we know that they haven't been given them. So it is going to be all over. Ayatchev is going to get it. And, and he, he's, he's looking at him. And I'd like to ask him at this point, you know, Bizzuri, what did you expect? What is it that you want? And his answer could only be, I want the third Shido. Oh, so you didn't come here to do judo then? Yeah, no, exactly. Uh, and that's the exact point. Sorry. Is that um, we can't give those. If we do, then everybody does it. Everybody just pushes somebody outside of the area. Everybody enforces a penalty from everybody else. And everybody plays to the penalties rather than playing for the Ippon. And I'm sorry, but you, you can't have that. I don't think that's the way to go. Yeah. He did play it a little bit close, though, I have to say. I have to say. <laughs> well, we knew with 20 seconds to go that he had one to burn. But instead of leaving it until the last few seconds, he burned it at the 22nd point. Thereafter, he spent the next 20 seconds backpedaling. He did. But, uh, you know, which under normal circumstances, I think, you know, deser would deserve a Shido. Only if your opponent was He's looking for a way to try and throw you, then you'd say, this guy's running. Sorry, you're passive. Penalty. But if your opponent is only trying to drag you down, push you down and get Shido. Or push you out. Or push yeah, you out. Absolutely. Yeah. We come now to the second of the bronze medal contests. Soman Mahmadbekov of Tajikistan faces Hidayat Hidarov of Azerbaijan. It'll be Mahmadbekov in the white Kadogi, Hidarov in blue. The referee in the middle for this one is Everardo Garcia of Mexico. Well, Medvedev will want to do this uh, for the obvious reasons. Hyderov will want to get a medal here as well as his teammate. A real lackluster semi-final. I think he'll look back on his semi-final match and he'll go, well, I, I think I could have done better than that. So can Azerbaijan get two on the rostrum? I think the Federation would be reasonably happy, wouldn't they? You know, two fighters, two medals up there, and whichever one of them brings it home, so be it. But they would be delighted with the gold. I think you're right. Uh, I think Orozhov now must be in, in the wings just thinking, here we go again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Not, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, well, oh, yeah. Sorry, no yeah. pun intended. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> that was rather, it was good, though. That well, was it was rather a, clumsy like of me, wasn't it? <laughs> you know, you like to think that you're going to be clever, yeah. but that was <laughs> completely <laughs> by accident. So, Shido apiece, 45 seconds gone. Equally as dangerous, aren't they? Both the uh, Chijek fighters. Yeah. yeah, indeed. They both look as if they're just kind of half ambling, but then really dangerous with the attacks. Can only, uh, only think what happens when they bo both fight each other. Wow. Uh, that's never good, you know, just listening to some of the coaches there and people shouting Shido Blue, Shido Blue, and uh, I'd rather hear Ip on Blue, Ip on Blue, or the other way around, you know, but uh, let's try and get a score. 
that mercifully we hear less of it now than we yeah. did a few years no, ago. We but do. It really was just, you know, the, the thing you didn't want to hear. In actual fact, I quite often look up to see, you know, who it is that's shouting and see if I can catch their right. <laughs> <laughs> But he, he is lacklustre, we know that. Hyder of here looks as if the uh, wind is out of his sails. But uh, like I said, if, if he definitely expected more here, as far as a world title is concerned, then he needs to look at his semi-final and think, where did I go wrong with that one? Medbukov just containing. Minute and a half left on the clock. I think you're right. Hidarov hasn't looked the same in this contest. He hasn't rolled over. He, he just hasn't looked as dangerous no, as he, he has in previous contests. Exactly. I mean, normally he's exploding underneath and uh, he looks flat to me. And I have to say that, you know, I've had it before when I've come out and you just know that it's going to be hard work all the way. Med Bukov has got to do something as well. He has to attack as well. Well, it's certainly Hyderov now that's initiating the uh, attacks. He just had a little look at the clock there. Yeah. I watched him, didn't he? Just had a little I look just that. to see where he was and uh, almost as if he wanted a little breather. Second Shudo to Hyderov. That's going to be carried over into the golden score period. Has the look on his face, Hyder of, of I don't want to be there, and uh, I might be totally wrong, but no, that, that's the feeling that uh, that I get from here. Just watching, you haven't got the same kind of intensity. He, he's slightly off the, the the pace that he would normally be on. He just doesn't look as aggressive in this contest as he has all day. And you know, it's like you suggested. He came here. What, wanting to fight Ono, wanting to be in the gold medal match, and unfortunately for him, he hasn't quite worked out. And I think he would have uh, probably been a, a real handful for Ono as well. Yeah, slightly different proposition yes. than Rustam Orozhov, who's over four <laughs> against yeah. Ono. <laughs> Well, Hyderov will have to uh, keep the work rate up now, otherwise he'll get that third penalty. Now, something could happen. Is he going to change direction? Yes, he does. I was going to say, Mac Magbedov is looking a bit... Yeah, he had to get it. as well. That little bit of a flurry there from Hyderov. Evened it all up. Is this the finish? Well, if he, he drops again for the Sumagashi, I think that'll be a mistake, Hyderov. 
and the reason being that uh, he hasn't really been close with it and uh, the more that Mahmad Bukov uh, stops it then the more chance of getting that third penalty. I wonder if just, just the, the awkwardness of Mahmoud Bedov and his, his ranginess that has just, I don't know, dulled or numbed Hidarov. Just doesn't seem to be as, as sharp as he was earlier on. I think that uh, both of the uh, Tijet fighters are equally as awkward. I think it just is their style of, of doing it, looking almost casual with it, but they're not, obviously. Now then, changes to the right this time. Trying for the Obatori Gaeshi. Can he get the leverage? Needs to make sure that he doesn't get himself into trouble. Coming up to three minutes of golden score. That's gone across the chin. The referee spotted that right away, so no chance of Hedara of even attempting to apply that. No, no chance at oh, all now. Oh. It could happen there. <laughs> like you say, can't feed it in, keep it in. It's a little bit better now from Hedara. He just stepped it up a little bit, looked a little bit more serious, and that's made all the difference between him, you know, going out with the third Shido, or maybe Mahmoud Bekov picking up the third Shido. He looks more likely to pick up the third penalty. Throws in that left Ojigari, but it's a lunging one, and Hidarov is moving away from him at the time. He can continue to roll, but in the end, he doesn't have the same kind of strength or power that Yulia Kowalczyk had earlier on when she drove for a similar technique. Well, there's a little bit more urgency here now from Hyderov. I think he can kind of uh, he can see that uh, he's struggling a little bit here Matt Medbikov That Ochi Gary nearly scored again. <laughs> now it's going to happen. Hyderov now looking for the opportunity, and Newaza can he get it? I don't think they've got the energy. He's going to try for the Juju Gatami here, but uh, it'll be all mm. the wrong angles. <laughs> Poor Niwaza exchange, actually. There were so, sort of three or four errors in, in the, when there were opportunities to, that, that went begging. I know it's been a bit harsh because they're very tired. They're already into four and a half minutes of golden score. I'm just saying that there were opportunities yeah. and they went begging. Oh, it's you, Gary Hyderov. Something's going to go now. Oh, it's Hyderov all the way now. And I think uh, Mag Mag Bukov is, uh, is the one that has got to do something now. I think it's uh, quite close now to being stopped. Yeah, he I gets think one if, last chance. Yeah, one, one more roll of the dice. Let's see if he comes up with something that's worthwhile or else. Oh, 
Well, that was it. Just tidies it up for a bit. Another couple from Yadarov, and then he's back in the same position. Five minutes into Golden Score, and it's not really where Hydarov likes to be, this, is it? Not what I would call an athlete that is renowned <laughs> for his great condition. <laughs> A couple of years ago, you would have been out already. <laughs> yeah, but he's World worked, Championships. He, he's worked a lot harder. He wouldn't have been able, He wouldn't have been here. Five minutes into Golden Score, he was struggling to make four minutes. You know, but I, I think it, he relied much, much more at the front end, of a kind of power game. And now he's just that little bit better at managing it. He's also physically stronger, I suppose. That time he spends in the army. Time is over now. You can, you can tell his hair's growing back. Well, if I was him, I'd leave that belt alone. He just did, undid that then. Well, we saw one yesterday, didn't we? Well, you, you mess around with that. I, why would you do it if you've got two Shidos on the board? And uh, for the people out there, if you, uh, if you mess around with your belt and you don't tuck it in on your own, you can get a penalty. They've got two each. crowd is appreciating it. Good round of applause each think, time uh, that they grip up. The next lock off is going to be it. This is, uh, you see, he's doing the, exactly the same here. Medbekov is looking for the third mm. penalty. That's what he's looking for. Just trying to pull the head down. And, well, he should have had a look at his teammate there. It didn't work for him. Now Hyderov. So tired. They can't even think of what to do. 6-10 <laughs> into golden score. This has been going on for 10 minutes. Crowd like it. There are two people left in the venue who just don't want any more of this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's what Hydrov says. He said, I just want to go oh, home. Oh, that's as close as you can get. Well, without scoring, it is. He has a little look back there, doesn't he? Medbekov says, what have I got to do? He's in the driving seat now, Neil, after that attack, I think. Oh, now then, something's going to happen. Got to Hydrov drop the hips. looking for it. Oh, he's onto his front, no. Wow. They can't even stand up, like you said. It's, <laughs> a, it's a real problem for them. Hyderov went for it then. Real commitment. Elbow was out. No score, of course. Here he comes again. Can't get the right hip far enough across. Slips. Yeah. Well, it was Hyderov that, that yeah. did the technique. It wasn't uh, anything to do with Matt Bedpikov. Seven minutes. It's going to happen now. Yeah. It's going to happen. Something's going to happen. He should stay with the hip technique and make sure he gets that hand. It's so easy to say. Actually, that's a really stupid thing to say. At this point, they know what to do. They just don't have the physical ability any longer. They're so drained. So better not be too critical because they're standing on their feet when many of us would be lying flat on our backs. <laughs> <laughs> How good is that? <laughs> let's let's both, both have a break. <laughs> they can't penalise both of us. Oh, oh yes, they can. It. Yeah. Let's just have a break, and then let's go again. Just drop the hips here. Oh, close. Yeah, I, th I think the Sumigeshi one is too big an ass. There's just too much power needed there. He, he needs to leave it alone. I think the he, hip technique, yeah. you, can, you can fall across. 
Oh, I love the uh, that cameraman's got gotten into this as well. He loves <laughs> zooming in on that. Big I think number. the time thing is a good yeah. thing. He says. Yeah. No! Oh! That's My the score. Me. What's Harry for Hyder of? Where did that energy come from to lift wow. him in the air? He's going to sleep well tonight. I think they both will. And they're on their feet here. A lot of people are standing up and applauding. That was a terrific effort from both fighters. Mahmoud Bekov and Hidarov gave us real entertainment there. And that was before the final. <laughs> I, you know, the, 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 I, the score was great, but I love the bit where they're bent over. Yeah. They're both bent <laughs> Looking over at each there. <laughs> <laughs> wow, what a fight. Well done, guys. That was uh, amazing. Incredible. Both coaches bound to each other. Yeah. What a fight. They both know they've been in a fight, and everybody here just loved that. Okay, it wasn't the traditional style of judo, but that was something else. Yeah, I think you're right, Neil. It just written all over his face. I don't really want to be here for no. this. And then Mahmoud Bedov just proved it. <laughs> oh, goodness me. Yeah, it just, uh, it was an Ashiwaza to crown all Ashiwazas as far as he's concerned. Ooh. Wow, this is the one they've all been waiting for. The final of the under 73 kilo category. Rustam Orozhov of Azerbaijan faces Ono Shoe of Japan. It'll be Orozhov in the white jirogi. Ono in blue. The referee in the middle for this one is Billy Mati Kalinkanta of Finland. Commentary on this one. Here is Neil Adams. What a final. This is going to be something else. It's a repeat of the Olympic final. 4-0 to Ono over Orozhov, but Orozhov always fancies his chances. He comes out, he really does open up, and I think that's why Ono has had so much success with him. Meli Mati, getting counter of Finland in charge of this. Japan, I think they also, also, sorry, Shah, I, I was going to say the other thing is Orozhov, one of the most consistent. He does all of the events, right? And he's always there round about. And he's got the number one seeding here. But this man here doesn't do so many, but every time he comes out, he, he wins. wins. <laughs> this is the fifth meeting then for this pair. 4-0 in favour of Ono. Three times previously they've met in a final. The biggest, obviously, was the Olympic Games in Rio 2016. And then on the other two occasions, they were both in Dusseldorf. So not a happy hunting ground for Orozhov. And there was that quarter-final again in Dusseldorf. Well, away we go. Get ready for fireworks. He has the sleeve, oh no! Uchimata straight away off the bat. Well, you've got to say that he must have been out there thinking, what can I do to stop this guy, Orozhov? And that's going to be a penalty. Yeah, that's, a, that's a penalty. 
Yeah, there's no, it's, no doubt about yeah. that. Oh, Mate oh, was oh, called no, a long time get, before. Get yeah. it. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, no, just walked outside of the area. He's not allowed to do that. He's got to stay within the area. For me, that's like um, scoring a goal after they've called offside. <laughs> yeah, it went in the back of the net, but everyone or, or knew it. Or even just <laughs> knocking it in just for the sake of it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's what I could have done. <laughs> Give me now he has a sleeve. Oh, no. Yes, it's all over. Gets the hip on. Oh, no, scores hip on. I'm sure we're going to have another look at the uh, landing. Yeah, I don't see anything wrong with that. He had one go before when it was offside, if you like. <laughs> yeah. Or he'd stepped out of the area. They'd already called Mate. 10 seconds, 15 seconds later, he repeats the dose, this time in the area. And it's Ono again over Orojov. Olympic and world champion, oh no. Wins by Ippon, and uh, you can see there, talk about body language. Absolutely, that's uh, what I expected to do. Only Abe Uta, for me, only Abe Uta, of all the medal winners that we've had so far, has had that, that kind of, like, Undoubted. <laughs> Everyone in the crowd, undoubted, you know, oh no, favourite. And he himself, just so confident. No, nothing cocky about it, nothing cocky about it, just matter of fact. Uh, you know, there's a difference between being cocky and being confident. There's the Uchi Mata, look at the lift, and flat on his back. Absolutely flat on his back. Starts with the uh, uh, arm on the outside, gets the left there, Orozhov flat on his back for Ippon. Look at the support leg. The support leg starts on the outside, then it goes on the inside. Orozhov knew. He was kind of half praying that it might be a Wazari, just to give him an extra little chance there, but it wasn't to be. Three days of individual competition so far here at the Nippon Budokan in Tokyo have been quite surprising really because sooner or later you're going to come up against a day or a few of the big contests that disappoint and to this point not yet all the contests that we had looked at and expected to, to get something from we have in particular the finals i can't remember a, a bad final six finals we've had and i can't remember a bad one but the matchups have just been so so good so good and you know it's it's been consistent all the way through I could go through the, the, the other medal matches, the bronze medal matches as well, but, you know, there may have been one or two. We had one that had a lengthy injury and we had one that was a little bit of a stalemate because the styles were so um, difficult. But apart from that, we, we've, we've had some really, really tense and exciting judo. Today was no exception. Gold medals to Canada and one to Japan so the Japanese having missed out on day one nil are back back in the driving seat well back in the driving seat could have been two today but in the end it wasn't was it and uh, credit yeah. to uh, 
Victor Gucci, you know, because uh, she absolutely performed brilliantly all the way through. Because Naomi Osaka has been able to get herself into the main event picture. Naomi Osaka has been able to get herself into the main event picture. Naomi Osaka has been able to get herself into the main event picture. Naomi Osaka has been able to get herself into the main event picture. Naomi Osaka has been able to get herself into the main event picture. Naomi Osaka has been able to get herself into the main event picture. Naomi Osaka has been able to get herself into the main event picture. Naomi Osaka has been able to get herself into the main event picture. Naomi Osaka has been able to get herself into the main event picture. Naomi Osaka has been able to get herself into the main event picture. Naomi Osaka has been able to get herself into the main event picture. Naomi Osaka has been able to get herself into the main event picture. Naomi Osaka has been able to get herself into the main event picture. Naomi Osaka has been able to get herself into the main event picture. Naomi Osaka has been able to get herself into the main event picture. Naomi Osaka has been able to get herself into the main event picture. Naomi Osaka has been able to get herself into the main event picture. Naomi Osaka has been able to get herself into the main event picture. Naomi Osaka has been able to get herself into the main event picture. Naomi Osaka has been able to get herself into the main event picture. Naomi Osaka has been able to get herself into the main event picture. Naomi Osaka has been able to get herself into the main event picture. Naomi Osaka has been able to get herself into the main event picture. Naomi Osaka has been able to get herself into the main event picture. Naomi Osaka has been able to get herself into the main event picture. Naomi Osaka has been able to get herself into the main event picture. Naomi Osaka has been able to get herself into the main event picture. Naomi Osaka has been able to get herself into the main event picture. Naomi Osaka has been able to get herself into the main event picture. Naomi Osaka has been able to get herself into the main event picture. Naomi Osaka has been able to get herself into the main event picture. Naomi Osaka has been able to get herself into the main event picture. Naomi Osaka has been able to get herself into the main event picture. Naomi Osaka has been able to get herself into the main event picture. Naomi Osaka has been able to get herself into the main event picture. Naomi Osaka has been able to get herself into the main event picture. Naomi Osaka has been able to get herself into the main event picture. Naomi Osaka has been able to get herself into the main event picture. Naomi Osaka has been able to get herself into the main event picture. Naomi Osaka has been able to get herself into the main event picture. Naomi Osaka has been able to get herself into the main event picture. Naomi Osaka has been able to get herself into the main event picture. Naomi Osaka has been able to get herself into the main event picture. Naomi Osaka has been able to get herself into the main event picture. Naomi Osaka has been able to get herself into the main event picture. Naomi Osaka has been able to get herself into the main event picture. Naomi Osaka has been able to get herself into the main event picture. Naomi Osaka has been able to get herself into the main event picture. Naomi Osaka has been able to get herself into the main event picture. Naomi Osaka has been able to get herself into the main event picture. Naomi Osaka has been able to get herself into the main event picture. Naomi Osaka has been able to get herself into the main event picture. Naomi Osaka has been able to get herself into the main event picture. Naomi Osaka has been able to get herself into the main event picture. Naomi Osaka has been able to get herself into the main event picture. Naomi Osaka has been able to get herself into the main event picture. Naomi Osaka has been able to get herself into the main event picture. Naomi Osaka has been able to get herself into the main event picture. Naomi Osaka has been able to get herself into the main event picture. Naomi Osaka has been able to get herself into the main event picture. Naomi Osaka has been able to get herself into the main event picture. Naomi Osaka has been able to get herself into the main event picture. Naomi Osaka has been able to get herself into the main event picture. Naomi Osaka has been able to get herself into the main event picture. Naomi Osaka has been able to get herself into the main event picture. Naomi Osaka has been able to get herself into the main event picture. Naomi Osaka has been able to get herself into the main event picture. Naomi Osaka has been able to get herself into the main event picture. Naomi Osaka has been able to get herself into the main event picture. Naomi Osaka has been able to get herself into the main event picture. Naomi Osaka has been able to get herself into the main event picture. Naomi Osaka has been able to get herself into the main event picture. Naomi Osaka has been able to get herself into the main event picture. Naomi Osaka has been able to get herself into the main event picture. Naomi Osaka has been able to get herself into the main event picture. Naomi Osaka has been able to get herself into the main event picture. Naomi Osaka has been able to get herself into the main event picture. Naomi Osaka has been able to get herself into the main event picture. Naomi Osaka has been able to get herself into the main event picture. Naomi Osaka has been able to get herself into the main event picture. Naomi Osaka has been able to get herself into the main event picture. Naomi Osaka has been able to get herself into the main event picture. Naomi Osaka has been able to get herself into the main event picture. Naomi Osaka has been able to get herself into the main event picture. Naomi Osaka has been able to get herself into the main event picture. Naomi Osaka has been able to get herself into the main event picture. Naomi Osaka has been able to get herself into the main event picture. Naomi Osaka has been able to get herself into the main event picture. Naomi Osaka has been able to get herself into the main event picture. Naomi Osaka has been able to get herself into the main event picture. Naomi Osaka has been able to get herself into the main event picture. Naomi Osaka has been able to get herself into the main event picture. Naomi Osaka has been able to get herself into the main event picture. Naomi Osaka has been able to get herself into the main event picture. Naomi Osaka has been able to get herself into the main event picture. Naomi Osaka has been able to get herself into the main event picture. Naomi Osaka has been able to get herself into the main event picture. Naomi Osaka has been able to get herself into the main event picture. Naomi Osaka has been able to get herself into the main event picture. Naomi Osaka has been able to get herself into the main event picture. Naomi Osaka has been able to get herself into the main event picture. Naomi Osaka has been able to get herself into the main event picture. Naomi Osaka has been able to get herself into the main event picture. Naomi Osaka has been able to get herself into the main event picture. Naomi Osaka has been able to get herself into the main event picture. Naomi Osaka has been able to get herself into the main event picture. Naomi Osaka has been able to get herself into the main event picture. Naomi Osaka has been able to get herself into the main event picture. Naomi Osaka has been able to get herself into the main event picture. Naomi Osaka has been able to get herself into the main event picture. Naomi Osaka has been able to get herself into the main event picture. Naomi Osaka has been able to get herself into the main event picture. Naomi Osaka has been able to get herself into the main event picture. Naomi Osaka has been able to get herself into the main event picture. Naomi Osaka has been able to get herself into the main event picture. Naomi Osaka has been able to get herself into the main event picture. Naomi Osaka has been able to get herself into the main event picture. Naomi Osaka has been able to get herself into the main event picture. Naomi Osaka has been able to get herself into the main event picture. Naomi Osaka has been able to get herself into the main event picture. Naomi Osaka has been able to get herself into the main event picture. Naomi Osaka has been able to get herself into the main event picture. Naomi Osaka has been able to get herself into the main event picture. Naomi Osaka has been able to get herself into the main event picture. Naomi Osaka has been able to get herself into the main event picture. Naomi Osaka has been able to get herself into the main event picture. Naomi Osaka has been able to get herself into the main event picture. Naomi Osaka has been able to get herself into the main event picture. Naomi Osaka has been able to get herself into the main event picture. Naomi Osaka has been able to get herself into the main event picture. Naomi Osaka has been able to get herself into the main event picture. Naomi Osaka has been able to get herself into the main event picture. Naomi Osaka has been able to get herself into the main event picture. Naomi Osaka has been able to get herself into the main event picture. Naomi Osaka has been able to get herself into the main event picture. Naomi Osaka has been able to get herself into the main event picture. Naomi Osaka has been able to get herself into the main event picture. Naomi Osaka has been able to get herself into the main event picture. Naomi Osaka has been able to get herself into the main event picture. Naomi Osaka has been able to get herself into the main event picture. Naomi Osaka has been able to get herself into the main event picture. Naomi Osaka has been able to get herself into the main event picture. Naomi Osaka has been able to get herself into the main event picture. Naomi Osaka has been able to get herself into the main event picture. Naomi Osaka has been able to get herself into the main event picture. Naomi Osaka has been able to get herself into the main event picture. Naomi Osaka has been able to get herself into the main event picture. Naomi Osaka has been able to get herself into the main event picture. Naomi Osaka has been able to get herself into the main event picture. Naomi Osaka has been able to get herself into the main event picture. Naomi Osaka has been able to get herself into the main event picture. Naomi Osaka has been able to get herself into the main event picture. Naomi Osaka has been able to get herself into the main event picture. Naomi Osaka has been able to get herself into the main event picture. Naomi Osaka has been able to get herself into the main event picture. Naomi Osaka has been able to get herself into the main event picture. Naomi Osaka has been able to get herself into the main event picture. Naomi Osaka has been able to get herself into the main event picture. Naomi Osaka has been able to get herself into the main event picture. Naomi Osaka has been able to get herself into the main event picture. Naomi Osaka has been able to get herself into the main event picture. Naomi Osaka has been able to get herself into the main event picture. Naomi Osaka has been able to get herself into the main event picture. Naomi Osaka has been able to get herself into the main event picture. Naomi Osaka has been able to get herself into the main event picture. Naomi Osaka has been able to get herself into the main event picture. Naomi Osaka has been able to get herself into the main event picture. Naomi Osaka has been able to get herself into the main event picture. Naomi Osaka has been able to get herself into the main event picture. Naomi Osaka has been able to get herself into the main event picture. Naomi Osaka has been able to get herself into the main event picture. Naomi Osaka has been able to get herself into the main event picture. Naomi Osaka has been able to get herself into the main event picture. Naomi Osaka has been
the stadium announcer normally calls the fighters together and the VIPs for what's called a family picture. I'm surprised Taguchi's father hasn't rushed up there <laughs> to, to be on the stage for a family picture. Yeah, I'm surprised as well. I spoke to him just before she was uh, going out for a semi-final. And uh, I said, big chance. And he said, I don't like to think about it. And yeah, Mr. Has happened. Mr. Deguchi and Mr. Asahina are probably the two, two dads you want to give a, a wide berth when it comes to talking about their daughters. Very proud, of course yeah, they Absolutely, are. yeah. And shakes. And a smile. Yeah, even Yoshida is getting down. in there with a smile. What's she going to afford to? She's got the red back patch on for the rest of the day. Next time we see Krista de Gucci. <laughs> what a character, isn't it? <laughs> She'll be wearing a red back patch. Excellent stuff. Great for Canada. Great for Taguchi. World champion. <laughs> I've never seen anything as comical in my life at the end of a, a, a mental presentation ceremony because there was one person saying, get off. <laughs> and we, want to, we, we want to get the other people on, the other people on, and the press are saying, "Come back, come back," because they want the best pictures. <laughs> oh well. Let's <laughs> get <laughs> Come now to the awarding ceremony for the men in the under 73 kilo category. The medals will be presented by the executive producer of Complex Business Center of Kapuhodo DY Media Partners, Medalwa Akodo DY Media Partners, Complex Business Center of Osaka, Yokomizo Kenichiro Sabani Presenta Osametaitaimas. The first of the bronze medals goes to Hidayat Hidarov of Azerbaijan. Still a, breathing heavy, isn't it? <laughs> he hasn't recovered yet. <laughs> no, he hasn't. There's a bronze medal also for Denis Iyatsev of Russia. Silver medal goes to Rustam Orozhov of Azerbaijan. The gold medal goes to Ono Shoei of Japan. Well, you can honestly say that he is absolutely the best in the world. Oh no. Uh, just a quick look now. Some of the uh, some of the techniques from. Oh no! Such variation of techniques. Hardly a flicker. 
with his face shot. Flowers presented by the Vice President of Judo Union of Asia, Executive Managing Director of All Japan. Well, I was going to say his facial um, awareness, but uh, his features, should I say. Hardly a flicker, just very, very cool, calm and collected, just absolutely knows what he's going to do and when he's going to do it. He moves into a rather special group who have won three or more world titles as well as an Olympic title. So he's up there with Dukas, Iliadis, Inoue, Gion, Koga, Drulis, Gonzalez, Anno, Anno Noriko, four world titles and a Olympic title. Kaysun here of the Republic of uh, Korea. Of People's Republic of Korea with four world titles and Yamashita and Pong Wen. And, and of course, Ted Big ones. Well, he, he's in uh, another group who've won double Olympic gold medals. I'm not going to get into that one yet. We'll do that next year. And now the national anthem of Japan. So after three days of competition, Japan widened their lead with a, well, it was an amazing display of Vipon Judo. Ono was truly supreme, he really was. But Deguchi wins Canada's first ever world title. Judo, for me, has never been better. Tomorrow, we've got two more weight categories in the middleweight uh, categories. Uh, we look forward to more judo action, great action, and lots of ippons, of course. Uh, we're having a ball here in Tokyo, I tell you. Uh, Sheldon and I and Loretta and all of the commentary uh, staff are having an absolute ball. Join us at the same time tomorrow. Until then, from Sheldon and I, it's goodbye for now.
on the screen. Do you know Japan? Three gold, two silver, and three bronze medals. Ladies and gentlemen, dear judo guests, this is the end of the third day of World Judo Championships Tokyo 2019, Japan. Congratulations to the all medalists. Dear spectators, thank you very much. Right, welcome back to our mat side sofa here at the Nippon Budokan in Tokyo, the close of day three at the World Championships. I'm alongside Neil Adams and Loretta Kusak Doyle. I'm going to start by asking Loretta Kusak Doyle her thoughts on that last uh, contest that we've just seen there, the under 73 kilo category final between Rustam Orozhov of Azerbaijan and Ono Shoe of Japan. Loretta. Well, I could hardly hear with the noise at the back, but <laughs> head her off with Azerbaijan winning that bronze medal. Well, that yeah, that, that, yeah, that's the one. Right, well, <laughs> that was like a scene out of the gladiators, wasn't it? It went on and on and on. The outcome, I was delighted for him. I really was. I was a little bit concerned in the semi-final when he lost out against his teammate. I just thought, is that going to be the thing that just knocks him out completely of getting on that podium. But he dug in deep and, and at one stage I thought he was just going to throw in the towel himself because there was a pause in that bronze medal match and it actually had everybody tickled to death on that really. But it was a great, great match. It really was. I loved it. I, I think that was the funniest bit. You know, when, they, when it did, at the end of it, they'd done ten and a half minutes or whatever it was. And they both put their hands on their knees at the same time. They were looking at each other as to say, I want to go home. <laughs> and I think we've put about two or three different things in, but... Um, it's, re it's, re it's really loud here. And I'm laughing because Loretta didn't hear what I asked her. <laughs> she's, she's answered another contest. <laughs> right, okay, so which, which contest would you, would you like to speak about? <laughs> Anyway, yeah, yeah, okay. We'll pick one out the hat, Loretta. We'll, we'll, we'll just go for anything. Let's we'll go for anything. Let's go for next week. <laughs> right, okay. So we were just talking about Hid Hidarov. Uh, right. And now Ono. Okay, right. <laughs> right, let's go for Ono. Uh, tell us about Ono Show. <laughs> And Rustam or It's a long day. That's all I can say. It's a long day. But there, oh no, the, the king of the Uchi Mata, isn't he? What a finish. I'm delighted for the home crowd here. Japan getting a gold medal. That was really nice. A nice finish to the day. But the, the Iceman, he was cool, calm, and he was a destroyer today, wasn't he? He just, no one could really get anywhere near him. I've never seen an athlete like him that really just showed no motion whatsoever. He was on a mission. He took every match as it came. He, just, he, he dealt with it. He put it to one side. He moved on. And this is what he did all day. And in that final, I thought, you could crack a smile now if you want. You have actually won it. <laughs> but, and he didn't. And he didn't. <laughs> Right, Neil, your thoughts on that uh, uh, final then? You no, know, I just think that he is the... Um, somebody uh, came up to me, actually. Um, they were doing an article on Ono and said, what is it about him that makes him special? And I, I said, what makes somebody stand out is, is just the, um, the amount of techniques and the versatility that he has. 
Uh, so if the Uchimata doesn't work, then he'll throw with the Osoto. He's got Sienagi. He goes both sides as well with that. He, he does the odd Juji Gatami and the odd hold down, as well as Tomanagi as well, you know. So And he can pick up as well. He can counter. So he has such a variation of techniques. And like Loretta said, he is so cool, calm and collected. He had no doubt that he was going to win it. Well, just no doubt. And he came out with that face, didn't he? Yeah. I mean, it's body language, isn't it? You know, when somebody comes out and stands there as if to say, you know, and we, were, we were even laughing in that semi-final, weren't we? You know, and it was almost like he looked at his clock there and he just went, you know, you're keeping me from something. Do you know what I mean? So don't delay it any longer because I am going to throw you. And that is absolute brilliant, you know, when you have somebody that superior. And I think that... Well, he's Olympic and world champion now. Like you said uh, before, we just came here. Uh, a three-time world champion and, uh, and an Olympic champion. Brilliant. And the other contest that, that Loretta had mentioned was Mark Makhbedov uh, um, and Hidarov. That really was a terrific one. And Neil did pick out a particular point in that uh, contest where they were absolutely dead. They both stood bent over with their hands on their knees looking at each other nobody moved and they just kind of gathered their breath and said right let's go one more time <laughs> really was terrific. and the ending was just spectacular yeah i mean it was that ending wasn't it you know that was uh, that that um i mean it, everybody just kind of half expected them to just both collapse and he pulled that out the bag you know so where did that come from i'm sure when he's lying in bed tonight he'll think where the hell did that come from <laughs> Right, the under 57 kilo category, I think we're going to jump, jump straight to the final. Krista Deguchi and Yoshida Tsukasa. Well, Deguchi, she was on fire today right from the beginning. She, she really came to form just in the right time at this World Championships. And um, she was well prepared for that final. She had the number of... She, did. she really did, and um, she. But at stages, I just felt that um, she played dangerously in the Niwaza, and I. But again, tactically, she knew what she was doing. I was worried for her, and I'm sure a lot of others were really worried about her venturing down into the Niwaza. I, I, sorry, I just want to ask you quickly while it while it's on the screen here, because you're very very good uh, tactically. At what point we're, we're, we're going to get to see that again? But at what point does she make the wrong move here because Yoshida gets into a bad position which, which, which um, Deguchi is able to uh, take advantage of and, and come up with the throw when when you get to see that because it, it will come around again to, at what point does she move in the wrong direction she gets into the wrong place and then Deguchi throws her well as you can see she's coming across there's the first attack she comes round, the, but then she tries to cut the head and she turns that arm over the top to try and throw her forward. Brings that arm over the oh, top. Sorry. Right, okay, Neil, have another look at this. We're going to see it again. I think you're right. I mean, she did come over. Uh, but but the, the, the other point uh, here is that, uh, and I, we keep talking all the way through this, that now we now have transition from Niwaza to standing. And uh, what happened was there, Yoshida came up off the floor uh, um, to kind of reset and go again. And uh, Deguchi wasn't finished. And uh, <laughs> that's exactly the point about the transition from Newaza to groundwork. She came up, tried to readjust her hand, but the match was still on. The Tachiwaza was still on, and Deguchi took her backwards. Uh, took her opportunity perfectly. Yeah, I mean, look at that. Now maybe you can talk us through it, because it's coming up here. Yeah, I mean, here it comes. So. First of all, Deguchi attacks. Then Yoshida comes up. As Yoshida comes up, Deguchi was catching the, um, the action reaction. So, I mean, she'd already done her, uh, one technique going one way. We already talked about, didn't we, having two separate techniques as part of a combination, not mixing them together. She had one completely different technique. As they were coming up there, uh, she just took her backwards, and it was a great uh, transition from Newaza to ground. Uh, she, to standing, she gets in that awkward position, Yoshida, where she's, yeah, the arm is going around the back. She's searching for something that ends up not well, being what she there. she was going for was the Ouchigari. She was going for that Ouchigari, but I don't think she realized that Deguchi was that far under her core 
and ready to take her back. And as she spun round to come in, cap the head, the Ouchigari, and as she turned her head, Deguchi was already travelling back and it just accelerated that move. It was, it was, the timing was just perfect for Deguchi and it was totally misjudged. By her. It really was, she was totally, Yoshida really was mis, misjudged that. I think when she landed as well, I mean, she knew at this stage that it was gone, didn't she? And I think um, credit to Deguchi because not only uh, winning Canada's first ever world title, uh, but uh, she has been absolutely brilliant and consistent all through the year. And look at that change of direction. That change of direction is, is a real skill and, you know, really positive. Don't forget that that was a world champion she was throwing there. And uh, she's now the new world champion. Canada have their first ever world champion. And like you said as well before we came here and uh, before we came on air, that we uh, now have to look a year ahead she's going to be looking for that Olympic title. Mention for Yulia Kowal Kowalczyk, honourable mention for the Polish fighter. She was brilliant wasn't she? Absolutely brilliant. All day I watched her and I'm thinking when is she going to fall? When, what hurdle is she going to go on and what stage are we going to see a weakness? But she dug in deep and she was solid wasn't she? Every attack was just spot on. And no, that I've, I've seen her such a maturity. She spun under, and Ilieva, to me, was also an athletic. I thought she was good today, and I couldn't see her being stopped. I really did think that she was going to take that um, bronze medal. But, um, oh, crikey, that was a real turnaround in that bronze medal final. Who was it that uh, Kowalczyk caught earlier on with that technique? Where was, where sh where was she? Because we saw her throw someone, it was kind of like a, a, an upset. Was was she in the lower half of the draw? She was in the top half of the draw. Was it Miss Living? No, it was Yoshida. She threw, she was ahead of Yoshida with only ten That's seconds right, left to go with same. that same technique. Exactly the same technique. You're right because we all went, oh, this could be the biggest upset of the day. But then she pulled it out and she was able to then follow through. But. Right, well, she, got, she gets an honourable mention, anyone. Uh, uh, any other names you want to pull out the hat? Not really. I, I, I just think that, um, you know, we've, again, on the third day of competition, we've seen some amazing judo, some drama as well. And, uh, you know, uh, you all, it's great, isn't it, when you get some matches. I mean, that 10-minute match, you'd think, well, that's going to get a little bit sameish, But, I mean, it was still exciting. And... It, ended excitingly as well and uh, I think that that um, it just shows what judo is all about it's not always about scoring the hip on sometimes it's about winning the match but uh, we've seen some great judo and we've seen some drama and in the end I think um, you know we've uh, Japan have been run closely I mean um, uh, uh, Marius Visa said didn't he he said Hopefully, we know Japan are going to be the main contenders out there, but we know that uh, everybody's going to be chasing them hard, and I think they are being chased hard. Yeah, they haven't swept a day yet, and, and on day one, they didn't get, they didn't um, hit the top with, with the gold medal. Okay, so we've had three days of exciting competition, and we look forward to day four tomorrow when we'll have the under 63 kilo category for women and the under 81 kilo category uh, for men. Join us at 11 o'clock uh, tomorrow, start time of 11 o'clock. It'll be Loretta Cusack doyle uh, Neil Adams and myself. We've got a couple of other people floating around here. Dennis van der Gase has been in and Anthony Corelli has been in. We look forward to their company uh, as well. But from the three of us here on the sofa, Matt's side at the Nippon Budokan, it's bye-bye for now.